It's a Saturday sweep for Georgia State basketball as the Panthers sweep the Georgia Southern Eagles. Wins for Sharon Baldwin and Ron Hunter. You're watching this week's Georgia State Sports Update. Hi again, Panther fans, and welcome into this week's Georgia State Sports Update. It was a Saturday sweep for Georgia State basketball as they hosted the Georgia Southern Eagles in men's and women's basketball here at the Sports Arena. Sharon Baldwin's women's basketball team gets their first conference win of the season on the Sun Belt. No better team to do that against than Georgia Southern. And then Ron Hunter on Samaritan's Feet Day. Coaching barefoot on the sideline gets an 83-66 win for men's basketball over Georgia Southern. Dave Cohen joined by Brandon Leak. And, you know, we're, we're, we spend a lot of our Saturdays here at the Sports Arena. This is one of the better Saturdays here in recent memory, uh, you know, that I can remember at being out here with, uh, with Coach Hunter and Coach Baldwin. Well, if you want to win on a Saturday, you <laughs> want to make sure Georgia Southern's on the uh, wrong end of it. And it was a, a really good day. Good to see Coach Baldwin Tenner get the win. And Kiara Henry did a really good job helping to close out that game. And then the fellas, they played really good team basketball. Ball. They did a really good job of moving the basketball. Probably could have closed the game out with a bigger margin of victory if not for the offensive rebounds. But outside of that, great defense, good three-point shooting, timely rebounds, and a really good finish at the end. You know, if we had known that Tukey Brown was not going to be available because of injury, as we were kidding around on the radio, I would have slept a whole lot better last night. He didn't play, and that certainly that changes the dynamic of the game a little bit. But again, as you reminded me, Demarcus Simons was ill and did not play last year on our trip down to Statesboro. You play with who you brought to the dance, and uh, so Tukey wasn't available. They needed other guys to step up, and Georgia State did a really good job defensively. Yeah, and I think the guys did a really good job of not looking past that. Sometimes you can see a star player out, and you think, oh, this is going to be a little bit easier uh, than we thought, but it wasn't. Uh, the Georgia Southern Eagles came, and they came to win, and so the guys who played those minutes that Tukey Brown didn't play, we had to play equally as well defensively, and I thought defensively we did it the right way. We uh, rotated well. We didn't give up a lot of wide open shots, and the Eagles had to make a lot of tough shots, even though they didn't shoot a, a very good percentage. And I thought we moved the ball offensively. So uh, taking advantage of a situation, but not looking past anybody on the floor, I think is the sign of a mature team. Well, Georgia State placed four in double digits, led by Demarcus Simons, the all Sun Belt performer with uh, 24 points. That was a game high to go along with 10 rebounds. And as we were talking on the radio in, in our discussions with Demarcus, you know, Demarcus somewhere down the line, as long as he stays at Georgia State, would like to have his name mentioned with the likes of the Shenard Longs and the Daryl Coopers and the Kevin Morrises and R.J. Hunter and Ryan Harrell, some of the greats that have played here at Georgia State. And, you know, it's uh, it's games like today, big games, energy-charged games against your in-state rival and a Sunbelt Conference rival that go a long way with the way he played today to, uh, to to making that become a reality. Conference games, games that are important to the fan base and games that are important to the standings. And this was a big game. It's a conference game. You want to make sure that you get as many in the bag as you can you certainly want to win as many at home as you can and I think DeMarcus helped lead the charge 24 points 10 rebounds um, he assisted uh, he hustled and he got rebounds late in the ball game so he wasn't just here to score he led the team uh, he led by example and it was a really good way for him to help us at this point in the season beat a very high scoring and competitive team second in scoring in this one for uh, Georgia State in the men's game was Isaiah Williams and you know we've talked a lot about Isaiah uh, the fifth year senior and what he brings just the calming effect sometimes he's played in a lot of games like this uh, energy charge games and emotional games and he comes in he scores 16 and really calms the team down he's like the closer and yeah. uh, you see uh, old Bobby Cox <laughs> when he was managing the Braves he used to you know tap his hand and go to the bullpen and go get the closer and that's what Ron Hunter has he really has a closer a senior in Isaiah Williams he doesn't panic he doesn't turn the ball over late he takes care of the ball he can score he can shoot and he can make his free 
throws. So he's such an awesome weapon, whether you're behind, which we hopefully aren't in a lot of games, but in a game like this, when you're trying to close out a team, Isaiah Williams, certainly a big weapon for the Panthers and for Coach Hunter. Well, for Georgia State as well, another good game from Malik Ben Levy. He ends up with 11.7 rebounds, four assists in 35 minutes. And uh, he's been playing well as of late as uh, for this Panther ball club, uh, even going back to the sweep of the Carolinas this past week up at App State in Coastal Carolina. Yeah, he does a lot uh, rebounding, steals, altering shots, deflecting shots. But we need him to score, too. And I like when he gets into a scoring rhythm and, and gets in early on the scoring. And I thought it was good that he was a big part of that because his defensive energy is also uh, very motivating for his teammates that are on the floor and the guys on the bench when they get ready to come into the game. The only thing that will force me to wake up in a cold sweat will be 21 Georgia Southern offensive rebounds. Yeah, that's something that I'm sure they're going to talk about. I'm trying to remember a game where an opposing team has had that many offensive rebounds. Yeah, and, and it's twofold. Um, you know, one, you don't want to give up that big of a margin. Uh, but the other side of it is you did force a lot of missed shots. You took uh, time in making sure that everybody was good on the scouting report. And so the reason the Eagles were able to get so many offensive rebounds was because they missed a lot of shots. Now, you would like to see that number reduced by uh, a half at least. Um, but at the end of the day, you, you were still able to win by double digits. You were still able to make them uh, be uncomfortable. And uh, now that you know uh, next time they're going to be looking at something on film, you know you have to box these guys out better when we go down to Statesboro. All right, again, the final 83-66. Georgia State a winner here in this first of a three-game homestand. DeMarcus Simons leads the way, 24 points, 10 rebounds, and six assists. Right now, let's take a look at some of the highlights. Marcus going to go in, blows by Quan Jackson on the right baseline and slams it home. Back out front, Isaiah Williams for three. Got a long three by Isaiah Williams. Brings it out to Jeff Thomas again for three. God, in the corner left baseline, Jeff Thomas has hit back-to-back -back threes. Say Williams gets it ahead to Simons. Get out of the way, Tomahawk dunked by Demarcus Simons. Joining us right now on the Georgia State Sports Update, Georgia State's head basketball coach Ron Hunter. And it was a great day on Saturday of uh, last week at the Georgia State Sports Arena. 83-66, the final score coach. And uh, the, the first meeting, Georgia State, Georgia Southern, because you'll play them again in February down in Statesboro. But the first one goes in the win column for Georgia State. DeMarcus Simons, 24 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists. And uh, it's great to get a win over your in-state rival. But at the same time, big because they were just in front of us in the standings in the Sun Belt conference yeah it was a really important game for us not because it was you know the Georgia State Georgia Southern rival but they they had a game up on us and so we needed to make sure that uh, we couldn't fall down too and try uh, going into the last half of the season so it was important for us to get the win and we were able to do that in convincing fashion and, and uh, but more importantly we're playing good basketball yeah. and that's that that's more important to me right now that we're peaking at the right time yeah I was gonna say you said earlier in the week on your radio show that you're starting to see the signs that they are peaking you don't want to peak right now because mm -hmm. you still got well another week in January a week or two in January, but then you get all of February. Yeah, there's no question. I, I said when we get to the point where defensively cons we're consistent through 40 minutes and, and we're able to sustain it, and then our offense is caught up to our defense, and then and that's, that becomes consistent, and that's what I'm starting to see. Offensively, we become really consistent in what we do. Defensively, we become really consistent, and then you put those things together for 40 minutes. That's when you know your team is really starting to peak over time. Again, DeMarcus Simons led Georgia State 24 points, 10 rebounds. Once again, they spread the scoring around. You go back to that road trip through the Carolinas and each game, five different Panthers scored in double digits, which I know you love. Four Panthers in double digits in this one. DeMarcus with 24 and Isaiah Williams coming off the bench. Your senior guard scores 16. Yeah, it just makes it really difficult to decide how you want to guard this team. Again, you're the best shooting team in the league and you're the best defensive team in the league. When you put those two things together, it just makes it hard. That's what I meant by the consistency. You know, again, you 
get your when, when it's your opportunity to make a shot, you step up and make a shot, and that's what we're doing. We're sharing the basketball. I love the assist turnover ratio right now, and uh, again, especially when we're what we're forcing on the other teams. And so, if we continue to do that, I think that only great things lie ahead. Jeff Thomas had an outstanding game as well. He took five shots. They were all three-point field goals. He made five shots. Yeah, yeah I tell you, he's. Uh, <laughs> if you look, I think now you know it's weird. The second leading scorer in the last three weeks have all kind of rotated. So if you look at our team right now, Jeff Thomas is the second leading scorer. But you know, I think just last week that was that was Devin, and it just rotates on how the guys are playing. And you know, Devin's playing a lot more to point and doing a lot of things that way, and uh, not getting as many shots. But then you know, when he gets going, you know, we haven't really talked about Devin getting going because right. you know he can have one of those thirty-point nights also. So that's what's really special about this group. And against Georgia Southern, of course, Georgia Southern played without Tukey Brown, one of their better players, but defensively held them under 40% field goal. I think they were just shy of 34% field goal percentage. Uh, they took 71 shots in that game. They made 24. And uh, as we talked about, they did a great job uh, against Mike Hughes, who yeah. I don't know, he always worries me because he shoots well against us. Now, as you said, yeah. more so down in Statesboro, but he was three for 15. Yeah, I thought we did a great job with Mike. And, and, and really with Tukey is that, you know, you know, somebody's going to step in and get the points. The points aren't the big thing. What, what, what I thought they would struggle with without him would be the assist. You know, he leads that team also in assists, and he right. can get the ball to different guys. And, and so taking that away early in the first half, they, they were able to make some shots. And, you know, over, over a period of time, it's hard when you lose your best player to be able to do that. And so, uh, again, but again, I, I, I would rather have him play because I thought we relaxed early in the game knowing he wasn't going to play. And we it, not so much our intensity because our crowd gave us intensity, but I didn't like the start of our game. Can you tell me the last time you coached a basketball game, or even maybe even played in one back in college and high school? You won the game, final score 83-66, and the winning team allowed uh, 21 offensive rebounds. That, that, and it, a, and it, but it wasn't a factor in the end. Unbelievable, amazing. I told our guys that we had to play defense twice a possession. <laughs> you know, we were to the point. All right, we're gonna play. We're, we're gonna get two stops in one possession. But that's how we were playing. And it shows. Cause look at the look at our field goal percentage defense. It just shows yeah. how well our defense is that we're gonna get. We're gonna let you get two possessions, and we're still not gonna let you score. But we got to be a better rebounding team than that. You you can't rely on that. Uh, uh, that becomes full goals after a while. We got to do a better job of limiting teams just one rebound. Two of the bookend forwards, as I call them, Malik Ben Levy, Jordan Session, both had outstanding games as well against Georgia Southern. Malik 11 and seven, along with everything else that he does, mm -hmm. and Jordan continues to play really well. He had seven and six, and he also. Uh, um, had a block and a couple of steals. Yeah, but if you add what Sessions did with JT at that five position was really, really impressive. Right. And so, uh, again, what we've got to do is our guards have to do a better job of rebounding. And we've talked about that. I mean, the one guard led us, and I mean, he had 10 rebounds. I mean, DeMarcus was really rebounding the ball. Uh, but, you know, the other guy, Jeff Thomas, had one rebound. That's something he's got to do a better job. Zeke's got to rebound, and Devin has to continue to come down and help us rebound. But uh, our forwards, they lead us with everything because they call our defense. They know the defense to play. Uh, they can call the defense inside of a possession uh, without me being able to do it. That's just having veterans and understanding what we're doing. Yeah, you mentioned Jordan Tyson, the transfer from St. Bonaventure. Four points, two rebounds. The points were great. The blocks. And how many blocks? Because it doesn't show up on the stat sheet. How many shots did he alter? Well, the, the, that was big. Or forced to yeah, alter. No, no, that was big. We needed that at that particular time. Especially he brings a different value. And Sesh brings more energy and, 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 and knowing what our defense is. And, and Jordan brings the body, the physicality, and the shot blocking. So when you can add those two in, it just really helps you become a better defensive team. Kind of when we had Kurt. And yep. we had Kurt on the backside. And he could, he could not so much block the shot, but he could alter shots. And so that really helps your team. All right, so you get to stay at home again this weekend. Uh, you've got uh, the Texas teams of the yeah. Sun Belt in. Uh, I know at the time this airs uh, on Thursday and Friday night, we'll, we'll be playing uh, University of Texas at Arlington. Go back to the preseason magazines. If you keep up with that, they were really picked in many of the polls to finish first. They got off to a little bit of a rocky start, but I think they've kind of righted the ship just a little bit, you know, as far as uh, their play. Well, they, they are. They're a really talented team. I think what they went, what they did is they added some transfers that could play immediately. And I think sometimes it, it, it it becomes full goal because you know the you know everybody has to play a certain role and so sometimes guys don't accept their roles uh, because they're too talented a team that has some of the slip ups they have. But if you look, they've struggled on the road and that's where you generally your issues and your problems show up is when you're on the road. So what we've got to be able to do is continue to play as a team, move to basketball. They've got some great uh, individual talented guys and so we don't need them to get well here. We need to make sure that uh, that we do what we do, really get them and play our style of basketball and get them locked down in the half court. Yeah, and Texas State will be here on Saturday and they're. 
to me, the, one of the surprises of the league. They're currently second in second place in the Sun Belt Conference standings behind Louisiana Lafayette. Yeah. Uh, Coach, always yeah. appreciate it. Good win. I appreciate uh, on it. On Saturday, and uh, let's keep it up. All right, continue to come out and watch us and support us. You had a great crowd on Saturday. I know you want to see more of that. Yeah, we need. We definitely need that with our students and our alumni and our Georgia State supporters. And we wish you have Georgia Southern week every week. All right, it was a Georgia State basketball sweep on Saturday because before Coach Hunter's uh, men's team uh, beat Georgia Southern, Sharon Baldwin's women's basketball team, they posted a 71-56 win over the Georgia Southern Eagles. That was uh, for Georgia State their first conference win. Right now, let's take a look at some of the highlights from that game at the sports arena. Right now on the Georgia State Sports Update, head women's basketball coach Sharon Baldwin. And boy, what a weekend they've had because uh, you got the first win in Sunbelt Conference play. And who better to it uh, for it to come against than the Georgia Southern Eagles? And uh, it was a big win. Final score, 71-56 on Saturday at the uh, Georgia State Sports Arena. Congrats. Thank you so much. I'll tell you, it was a great atmosphere, uh, wonderful game. Guys game afterwards was great. Uh, you know, the fans really helped us a lot. I think we got a lot of energy in the second half uh, with them. And, you know, it really was a good experience. Our players played really hard, played together. I thought we did a lot of good things. Uh, and yes, it's all, always good to beat them. You know, we were talking off camera, Jada Lewis goes down with the injury, second year in a row that you've lost one of your better, if not best players, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, but that it puts you in a position uh, as, as head coach and a staff, again, next man up. Somebody else has got to go ahead and rise to the occasion. Yeah. Uh, for you on Saturday, Kira Henry had 18.8 rebounds. Yeah, Kiara has really been the most versatile player on our team this year, and she's uh, leading us in scoring a little bit by a little bit right now over Shea. But uh, you know, she's played one through four essentially, and and anything I ask her to do, this game I need you to play at the point. This game I need you mm -hmm. to play at the four. She's been able to step up and really do that for us. It was a big run at the end of the first half to send you into the locker room with all, all if not most of the momentum. You had a 14-3 yeah. run to close out that second quarter again in college. And the men are still playing two 20-minute halves. Women yeah. are playing four 10-minute quarters. Yeah, it really, uh, you know, we really pushed the ball in transition and we were penetrating and kicking to shooters. And I thought that's the best we had done that all year long. Um, but we really were on the gas. I mean, our, our foot was on the gas. We were going, uh, really had them against the, the wall. and so so I thought that was a big push and, and big difference in the game. Another one of your, uh, we'll call it one of the new faces, I think she sat out last year, Francesca Manali. Mm -hmm. 18, was I right about it? 18, 18 rebounds. Y'all, yeah. I mean, dominated the glass, out rebounded Georgia Southern 56 to 24. Yeah, that's something that uh, really in this off week, because we didn't have a game on Thursday, we right. really worked on penetrating and kicking against the zone, uh, which is what they played against us most of the time, and a lot of teams are playing us because we're not shooting the three ball as well as we have in the past years. And then also rebounding. We've got to get, uh, we're not shooting a great percentage from the floor, so we've got to get more opportunities than some other people. And I really was proud of her. She's gotten better like in the last four or five games, really. Um, I think the game before this, she maybe had 11. Like she's come along. Uh, if she continues to do that, we'll be in a lot better shape. Yeah, so Kiara Henry had 18. Shea Fluker with 13. Janessa Murphy with 11. So, you know, as I've talked with Coach Hunter about here recently, it's not one person doing a bulk yeah. of the scoring. It's spreading it around. It yeah, seems I like think, you did that in that game. I think we're a better basketball team when we do that. Yep. I think that, um, you know, we're able to get to the free throw line, Matt Madison and Kiera usually get points from the free throw line and we're shooting it pretty well, uh, leading the conference in free throw percentage. So that's good. But uh, 
We also have Shay and, and Janessa that are able to score a little bit. And, you know, we need to get a little bit more production out of our five spot, and I think we'll be in good shape. But, you know, when you've got several people that can score and score different ways, I think it's uh, harder to defend. And so now, you know, it doesn't, we don't have to depend on one person. If they get shut down, now we can't score at all. Lastly, is that four straight wins against Georgia Southern? I think it is. So you've been, been. I know we beat them beat twice them here, last then year. You've been good on the road down there in, in Statesboro. Yeah, we beat them both times last year. Um, you know, which was really good, and uh, and I think we beat them down at their place the year before. All right, coach. Appreciate it. Good luck against the Texas teams in uh, this week. You got uh, UT Arlington and Texas State. So now, now, good time to start a little bit of a streak here. Yeah, it'll be a good challenge for us. The preseason player of the year, uh, Rebecca, on the inside. She's really good. And a challenge for us. Six five. We'll see if Frank can get 18 <laughs> rebounds this time. And they actually were picked to win. The league so yep. uh, it'll be a great weekend. All right, appreciate it. We'll see you out at the sports arena. Thank you. All right, I want to thank Sharon Baldwin, Georgia State's women's head basketball coach. Looking forward to seeing them play coming up Thursday night and Saturday afternoon at the Georgia State Sports Arena. We turn our attention now to Georgia State football. It's great seeing them at the arena on Saturday. A little bit of a surprise, but uh, former Georgia State wide receiver. He's the all-time leading receiver in Georgia State football history. Robert Davis joins us right now to talk a little bit about his first season playing in the organization of the Washington Redskins. Joining us right now on the Georgia State Sports Update, former Panther wide receiver, all-time leader of receptions, and that's Robert Davis of the Washington Redskins. And Robert, we saw you late the season. You were with us at halftime on the radio over at Georgia State uh, Stadium, and we were just about to get called in for the Redskins uh, for the three-man squad. You did, and uh, you played that first NFL game after being on the practice squad. How was that experience for you? It was a great experience. I mean, of course, it was short-lived because I, mean, I had a concussion that game, but it was definitely a great experience just to be able to go out there take the field, walk the field. I mean, it's just a dream come true. So it was definitely a great experience and one I remember for the rest of my life. When you say a dream come true as you're going out on the field for the first time, your dream that you've been thinking about since you were, you know, a kid, what was that like? What was going through your mind as you, as you get in that first game? Uh, I mean, my heart was racing. I mean, yes. Just one of those things that feels surreal. I mean, you feel like it's not even really happening. You're going out there, you see, you know, the Denver Bronco, the Denver uh, Bronco helmet, and you know, you just see you know, yourself out there with your guys and stuff like that. So, I mean, it is definitely exciting, and I mean, it just kind of felt surreal. But I'm pretty sure that I mean, as I keep going and keep getting more reps, it just start, you know, feel more like back at home in Georgia State. Again, the fact that uh, the Redskins signed you off the practice squad late in the season shows they have confidence in you, and they see you as a big part of the future of the Redskins. Hopefully. Yeah, I mean, right. Right now, just trying to focus on what I can focus on, you know, being the best Robert Davis that I can be, and he's going into camp and, you know, showing what I can do. You know, after competing, uh, you know, these last few years with Georgia State collegiately, Sunbelt Conference, and some of the non-conference games that we played in, uh, you know, you hear it all the time, the jump from high school to college, size, speed, skill. What was the difference? What you notice when you're on that practice squad and all of a sudden you go from competing in the Sun Belt collegiately to competing with other National Football League caliber players? I mean, I feel like anywhere you go, I don't know, whether you go to Alabama, Clemson, Georgia State, you know, it's always going to be a jump, you know, because the talent gets better and, you know, you're taking the best players from all those teams. So, I mean, just again, it was just another jump. I mean, people are stronger, faster. You know, you just have to, you know, adjust to that just like I did as a you know, freshman in college, just adjust to it. And I feel like once I do get adjusted and settled in, I'll be able to make plays like I did here. So what's uh, coming up in the future for you now? Now that you've gotten your feet wet and you've got a little bit of taste of the National Football League, you've still got more work to do in order to get ready for the next season. As you know, both collegiately and really at every level of sports, no matter what sport it is, there's never really an off season. Anymore. Yeah, uh, well, what's coming up next, I'll be going out to Miami more so to, uh, to train and, you know, just work on my craft a little bit so that I can you know, go into camp clicking on all cylinders. And uh, just for the immediate, I'm just trying to stay healthy, get my body you know, back feeling the way I want it to feel so that I can execute how I want to execute. Timing is everything. Georgia State uh, had a great season this year, a very, very good season. Uh, most wins seven. And then got back to the Auto Nation Cure Bowl and got a win this year. And I know that no matter where you were, one eye was on Georgia State football. Uh, not just one, both. I mean, I've, I've watched every game you know, that I was well, that I was able to watch. I say I think I only missed one, and that was just like the second half of the game. I watched every game, you know, just being able to see my, my little brother Penny out there playing. You know, that's just it's just warms my heart just to be able to see him play because you know I didn't have the opportunity to play with him my senior year. But I mean, I, I'm really excited for the, the direction that uh, Georgia State is heading with uh, behind Coach Sean Elliott. 
and I mean I have a good relationship with him as well but I'm, I'm just really excited for the future of the school. Robert it's always great to see you uh, always a member of the Panther football family all-time leader of receptions and uh, great to have you back at Georgia State best of luck here as you go forward. Yes sir thank you. All right I want to thank uh, former Georgia State wide receiver one of the best if not the best in Georgia State football history that's Robert Davis joining us here in the Georgia State Sports Update. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn. It's a new day, it's a new life for me And I'm feeling good I'm feeling good Let's do things that's never been done before here. Let's, let's go win the Sun Belt. Let's go attack that first bowl game and get that win. It's hey, it's up the middle, he escapes. Long blue jersey, can't get the other loose football. Kirk broke one tackle at the 15, at the 10, at the 5. Demarcus Kirk. White pressure coming, and he's going down. McKendy. McKendy Sheridor. Downfield, they got a man. It's up, and it's caught. Tamir Jones on the reception. Three back to Manning. Manning down to Carter. Caught. 25, 20, 50, 10, 5. Touchdown, Georgia State. Say it every day. It's a revolution.